The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Everybody, welcome to my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. Once upon a time, I was one of the co-hosts of the Joystick podcast, and we got to episode 99 and realized that the week following would be our 100th episode. And we didn't have it in us or didn't weren't, weren't able to be prepared enough, maybe is another way of putting it, to actually get it together to do something special for a 100th episode. Uh, so we released uh, episode 98, episode 98A, episode 98B, episode 98C, episode 99. 99.5, 99.75, 99A, and then episode 100. <laughs> okay. So we did that this one time. I don't know why I'm relating that anecdote right now, but welcome to episode 421 of My Brother, My Brother, and Me. We're so happy you've joined us here for our just the regular amount of weed discussion episode mm-hmm. of our podcast. Standard. <laughs> Just Standard right, amounts. Keeping it right between the navigational beacons. This is how much regular people like ourselves talk about weed. Not yes. too much. Happening. Not too little. Just sort of the one thing. Well, I, I think the amount. one thing this episode, Willie Nelson's Roll Me Up and Smoke Me When I Die. Does it count as a living will? Discuss. <laughs> Are there going to be people when Willie Nelson passes away from this earth and holy shit, we can't really talk about celebrities in this context anymore. We've been doing this show for eight years since Broken Bad on us so many times. Uh, Love, love Willie. Keep it up. Um, But when he does pass on, is there going to be somebody who's like, all right, here's a big, big rolling paper. Let's get and somebody's going to be like, hey, hold on. What do you this is a dude. And they're like, no, look. This, he was very, he was explicitly clear in the Honor song. His wish. He was I don't want to. I don't want to do this either. I, I don't want you to think I'm excited about smoking a man. But, I don't want to chief. I don't want to chief this dude. He's got hair and bones and the, 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 the whole deal. <laughs> it's not gonna go well. It's not gonna go good. But it, it's legally binding. Please don't bogart my dad. <laughs> No, Please this is. Me. We're talking about it too much. Yeah. This is yeah. let me get some of that kind, kind dad. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's it. That's it. That's, we can't talk about it anymore. Just and, a regular amount of weed. Because if we're not if we're not careful, this will become 420. If we're not careful, yeah. it'll be 420, and that'll be bad for it's us. It's not. It's we made promises. 421. Eventually, maybe we should just put 420 up for sale as like a sponsored episode. If you want us to make 420, uh, mm. we did have a possible situation that we thought would be a good fit for that that did not come together did not congeal Mm -mm. which is fine Mm -mm. that's the biz as jesse keeps telling us it's the biz uh he says that a lot sometimes he just yells it at us it's the biz this is the biz i never is i never see him smoke cigarettes Except for when he's telling us about the about the biz after we've gone through a pretty hard knock, he he lights up a big long cigarette and he tells us that it is the biz and that we need to just learn to handle it. He yeah. was in there. I this it was uh this was actually really hard for me. I went in to ask Jesse about this sponsorship and he is in there holding court. It's him, Alex Bloomberg, uh, uh, Ira Glass is there, Carrie Hoffman, like the whole gang, all the luminaries are the, there. The, and the illuminatories? Is that what you're saying? The, the illuminatories? And he's like, hey, Alex. I was like, hey, Jesse, I wanted to see how that sponsorship was going. And um, Jesse says, hey, Alex, watch this. 
he takes an ashtray full of cigarette butts because he had been getting stoked for this and just upends them onto my lap. And some of them are still hot. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, I'm just like ja- patting my crotch really yeah, fast. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to get wiener like, burns for sure. Everybody's like losing it. Adam Carolla, everybody's like loving it. And uh, then Jesse takes this glass ashtray, which is heavy as all get out, mm-hmm. and just chucks it right at my head. And I black out. There's blood. Alex Bloomberg loving it. Yeah. Like losing it. Absolutely in stitches about this. And Jesse comes over and he has one more cigarette. And he's like, oh, hey, you spilled my ashtray. So you have, this is your problem now. And he flicks a lit cigarette into my mouth. Yeah. And he says, it's the biz. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I, he makes me leave. How many, in, in that whole interaction, Justin, about how many cigarettes did Jesse smoke just it's, from start? Yeah, eight, eight eight cigarettes from Holy start shoot. to finish. I mean, he's oh. like crushing them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now eight, like in a lot or like all at once. Was he three just like, at once? Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And three how many of them were in like long, kind of uh, very intricate holders? The mm. first, the first three were in long, intricate holders. And he inhaled those in one drag. He pulled Whoa. down three cigarettes in one drag. Then he had a coughing fit that lasted for around 15 minutes, Mm -hmm. but everybody was like frozen solid. You could tell that like this had happened before and somebody had spoke and maybe it hadn't gone so good for them. So everybody just like froze in terror. They got two ashtrays thrown right at at them. Um, Yeah. And not only that, what I've heard, and maybe this is just a complete rumor, but I've heard if you record those coughing fits and slow them down, Mm. Those are full episodes of Bullseye in each <laughs> Yeah, sure. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Everybody wonders where podcasts come from. There you go. Well, it all starts when Jesse smokes three cigarettes like a cartoon, The Devil from the 1930s. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then he sees a podcast that he likes, and he's like, oh, ooga, and he yeah. turns into turns a, into a, a wolf. big wolf. Yep. What? Speaking of wolf, it was weird how Scott Ackerman kept asking if he could take my thumbs. And mm, Jesse was huh. like, no, Scott, no. And yeah. Scott Ackerman was like, please, like, please, please let take, me have the thumbs, Jesse. Take them literally. Not This was not like some kind of metaphor. No, take oh, my thumbs. Oh, no, dude. You ever seen that dude's thorax? Covered with thumbs. Yeah. Scott really? Ackerman wanted to take my thumbs, yeah. but Jesse wouldn't let him. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah you, lay, you lay him down flat on the floor like he's planking, and he just walks on the thumbs. It's horrible. It's horrible. Now, was, it's horrible to watch. Was the floating entity known as Gumhead there? Gumhead, of course, who started Head Gum. I'm oh, sorry, not a lot of people know this. It was started by a living, floating, uh, celestial being. Maybe. Do you, J- Do you mean former guest birds, Jake and Amir? Yes, correct. Well, that's Jake their and human Amir were there. Form. That's their oh, human uh, form. But when, when they... they join together, they become Gumhead. Wow. Did I yeah. mention Carrie Hoffman tased me? And I was already on the ground. It yeah. was uncalled for. But she was like, PRXXX, and then yeah. she jammed it into my chest. It she, sucked. She already had the taser charged up. And like, <laughs> she was like ready for it. Yeah, sure. It was miserable. Anyway, let's get to the questions. Uh, here's our first one. A couple of weeks ago, I was walking downtown, and a guy and his girlfriend asked me for change for a dollar. We were near a parking meter, so this seemed reasonable to me, and I pulled out my wallet. The guy immediately grabbed my wallet out of my hands and ran about a block, a half of a block away with it. Then he turned back around and gave me my <laughs> wallet back? In the end, I guess he stole my cash, which amounted to about $5. What happened? Was it a prank? Did no, no, up? you can't leave. You left out a savory fucking oh, okay, juice. Okay, you, sorry. you can't. You got to give them the I whole I skipped truth. a parenthetical. Shame on me. In the end, I guess he stole my cash, which amounted to $5. Actually, it was $6, but he left me $1. A juicy deed. What happened? Was it a prank? Did he give up? Is this a thing that happens? I mean, it was technically the theft of $5, but I was so relieved, I went out to cancel and replace my cards, and I'm okay with that? And it's, it says, from never from never going downtown again. This is so dope. This is my this, shit. This is really nice of the mugger. I mean... But is it's, it is where, it, where it, you dress as like the Monopoly man and like the mugger saw you and was like, ah, a juicy target. But what they didn't know is you'd spent almost all of your money except six dollars on that Monopoly man costume. <laughs> okay. Uh, we need to we need to take you guys are 
you guys are looking at the the little picture. I want to. You're looking at one grain of sand on the beach. I'm going to look at the whole fucking beach because I don't know if this is a mugging. I am not oh. convinced this is a mugging. What this, are you thinking? Imagine if you will, you're young and you're trying to show off to a to a new uh, significant other, and you're having some fun downtown, and you're having that downtown fun, and you say, and you're having a conversation about like mugging, and you say like, I bet I could mug, and it would be great, and your significant other's like, nah, uh, you won't do it, and then you you walk up to somebody and you mug them a little bit, and this is not even a mugging. You got your fucking wallet back. It's a little bit of a mugging, but come on. And but then you bring it back as like a jokey joke, but you did take five dollars from them. So it's kind of like a cute, like flirty, like fun flirty dare. Do you know what I mean? Like a yeah. truth or dare, fun flirt dare. I mean, let's recontextualize this, right? If somebody broke into my house mm. but only stole something worth five dollars, how would mm. I feel? You know, is it a like, fun? Well, yeah, was it a flirty dare though? With like a significant other, they're trying to show off and impress outside. But like, they broke into my house and they stole the magnet that I got at Kings Island, right? Yeah. Am I gonna? Am I gonna press charges? I don't I'm, know. You catch them in the act. They spring out the window laughing. They they, they also stole a, a precious necklace, but they hand right. you the necklace back through the broken window. They smash, and then you they walk outside. You see them with a the significant other, and then they show them the magnet, and then they high five and kiss and laugh, and then they walk off. And you're like, "Yeah, fair dinkum. You got you it, did a it was flirty. So it's possible that this is the perfect crime. What we're describing, because like if you go into rob a bank and you steal millions of dollars, but you come back seconds later, you hand them back the bags of money, and you're like, "Here's back a million dollars." I did keep $200. And they're like, huh, okay, well, you could have made off with the millions and you didn't. Yeah. So yeah, keep that 200 bucks. Okay, bye. Thank you. Can we just create a system where like, I don't know how many muggers listen to this show, but if we could just all agree on a little bit of etiquette that, listen, you're, uh, you're gonna make me cancel the cards, but I'm gonna cancel the cards for use the cards. Yeah. There's no need for that. You don't need my license. If we could just agree that like, you're gonna, okay, you got me. Okay, you got me. And then mm. you get my cash. All right. And we move on with that. Here's a, you shouldn't have cash anyway. <laughs> For no one, you just refer to the cash in your wallet as mugging stuffings. Yeah. And that's just yeah. my mugging stuffings. Yeah. It's for uh, when I get mugged and I will deserve it because I was carrying all of this mugging stuffings. Don't have too much. Mm. Have six bucks in there. There you got me. If we, if we codify this though, Justin, in yes. the way that you're describing, Mug I'm worried. I'm worried it's going to be so Can you easy. Say that real quick, for mug and you? stuffings. Yeah, if you cut, if you <laughs> if you have a, I mean, if we have two wallets, what are you right? doing today, Bob? Mug and stuff. Yeah, we got a right butt cheek wallet, and in that one we have driver's license, easily cancelable credit cards, pictures of our our kids and sure. loved ones, and then on our left butt cheek we have a smaller wallet. This one is going to contain all our money, and then like maybe a punch card for. Uh, you know, a Subway sandwich that you have all the way going. Because if I was a mugger and I saw that, I'd be like, hmm, hell yeah, hell yeah, that's like six bucks right there. Um, and then when you get mugged, you're like, oh, here, take, just take my left wallet. Just take yeah. my left wallet. This is this is my mugging stuff. And I'm worried if we do that, Justin, it's going to be kind of flag football. I'm worried it's going to be so easy to mug people that I might start doing it. Because if, 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 if the, but then you got Griffin, me. You, okay, so you mug Steve, right? But then mm. Jerry turns around and mugs you. What yeah. if there's just one, okay, what if we make it, there's just one money wallet, mm. and everybody's mugging everybody going, do you have the money wallet? Well, that's, that's, like, uh, that's socialism. I think. You away from the core argument, which is this. If you make mugging a crime, only the criminals will mug. Huh. Wouldn't it be more fun if getting mugged could become some, something of an opportunity to meet new people? Sure, sure. Uh -huh. And just don't have too much cash in your wallet, so it's not going to cost you too much. And you're just getting mugged, and it's not a crime. <laughs> so the person mugging you is not a criminal. They could be your neighbor, your best friend, whatever. You mm -hmm. are getting mugged, though, and it's a shakedown. Jeez. And and here's the one thing about this system that I've created, that which may have some flaws. It's too early to say. If you don't give them the wallet, they will fuck you up. They have carte okay, blanche. Okay, 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 okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a real... <laughs> It's a real, yeah, it's a real mug. <laughs> it's sure. just not illegal. <laughs> okay, um, man, Juice. I gotta say, you sound like the Dark Knight's the Joker right now. Like just yeah. full of chaos and I uh, love chasing cars. Really? Um, <laughs> can I do a Yahoo? Wait, do you wait? What, Justin? Do you chase cars? I'm like, I'm like a pup chasing a car, and he, I'm loving the hunt of the car and 
just going for it 24 7 chaos too oh baby yeah when i get that when i get that car i'm gonna bite i it almost lot. finished his famous monologue that i memorized verbatim griffin sorry Can keep I going. please finish the joker's yeah monologue? please 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 i gotta start over at the beginning okay can i be harvey dent uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh man, this burns a little. This this is a real stinger. How, are you Batman, Travis? Uh, I yeah, I guess if that's the only one left. Okay, but he's not in this scene, so oh, please okay. uh, I gotta respect do, that. I gotta hold my mouth like this. I'm just like a dog chasing a car <laughs> because hey, it's is the Joker in here? <laughs> yeah, it's me, the Joker. Sit down. I'm doing a monologue. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's fine. I'll start at the it's beginning. It's pretty good. I need a ointment. <laughs> I'm just like a dog chasing a car for the love of the chase and to keep my exercise fitness at 100%. You got to get your I, steps in. I'm starting over. I'm okay. just like a dog. Stop interrupting me, Batman. I'm like a dog chasing a car. Uh-huh. <laughs> Did somebody knock something up? <laughs> No, I'm flipping a coin to see if I should blow you goons away. Shoot your asses. I'm starting over. I'm just like a dog. Uh-huh. And I'm chasing a car. And it's my number one. A car. Okay. <laughs> you want to get nuts? No. You ever dance with the devil while you're chasing a car? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. <sighs> Well, you sure do lick yourself a lot. Yeah. Give me, give me your wallet, Joker. Yeah. You'll never get. It. Okay. Well, now I have to beat you up. I have a hundred wallets, and I'm gonna set them all out of fire. Okay. And scene. That's how. Of course, that was not a recording of the famous film Batman Does It Again. That was <laughs> us doing it. Weirdly enough. Griffin, do you have a Yahoo? Did you say? Ah, uh, yeah, I do. This one was sent in by uh, Adrian Cowles. Thank you, Adrian. It's Yahoo Answers user Jules who asks, My stupid brother might have given my dog a Twizzler. How can I tell for sure? Breaking it down. I want to get forensic on this motherfucker and figure out how we can figure out how they can figure out if their stupid brother did give their dog a Twizzler. And how they can tell for sure. If it was a gusher, it would be easy. A gusher would be easy because there would be dribbling juice down the doggy's chin. Yes. And that would be so easy to diagnose. You would get near the chin, smell it. If it smelled like well, you know watermelon or a grape. Um, the dog's head would have become a watermelon, Griffin. Like, of course. How silly of me. That is the joke you were making, and I yes. fucked it up. <laughs> start okay. it again. Read the question again. Start over. My stupid brother. If it was might- a gusher, it would be easy. Because of fruit head. Justin, any jokes? No, I want to hear the question <laughs> for once. My stupid brother might have given my dog a Twizzler. How can I tell for sure? Well, if it was an airhead, his head would have blown up real big. It's a shame it wasn't that. All right, all right, all right. If it was a Tizzy Roll Papa, owl would have come and taken it. <laughs> so any other fun candy commercial sort of things? If it, if it was Skittles, Skittles would have popped all over his face and body because Skittles could- pox. If yeah. It, if it was, uh, fuck, shit. My favorite candy bar, fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, probably not a ring pop. Is what you, <laughs> Remember what the even... great slogan for oh, that one? Okay. How they get so many goddamn nuts? <laughs> fuck, yeah. shit, fuck shit. <laughs> hey. It was actually the first candy that was ever discontinued before it was released. Yeah. So you see a lot of like retro <laughs> sites. Oh man. That have like, uh, do you re- remember this? Hey, nineties kids, remember this one? And we all say no. And it's like, well, it was discontinued, wasn't it? All right. There was yeah. a kid in middle school who swore up and down that he had had a fuck shit once. Uh-huh. <laughs> but when when pressed, he couldn't really give us any details except that there was a goddamn lot of nuts in it. <laughs> he said yeah. there was so many goddamn nuts. His uncle, he said, worked at the fuck shit factory. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing about the fuck shit factory. Nobody ever goes in. Nobody, nobody ever, ever comes, comes out. Come with me and you'll be in this fucking righteous candy factory. We got nuts. Holy shit, do we have nuts? I actually, one time, I got invited to go into the fuck shit factory 
But then Mr. Fuckworth came by and he told me that he would give me a uh, god his words, a goddamn lot of nuts. <laughs> If I would deliver to him the fuck shit recipe, and I ran and ran, and I never stopped running, if I'm being honest. And I think that really has led me to where I am now. So, um, the, the Twizzler, how can we, the dog ate a Twizzler, I think, and so I just want to help this person, so... We've had a lot of fun just cussing a bunch, but I'm wondering <laughs> if we can help this person whose dog might be Twizzler sick. If you scrubs want to eat my god tier nuts, <laughs> are you sure that you can handle it? <laughs> Here's the thing about dogs and Twizzlers. Uh-huh. They don't like them. Don't the, you don't me? you don't or dogs don't. Uh, you know what? I'm ambivalent to them. They're definitely better than red vines. Don't at me. Uh, but I don't think a dog would like like a Twizzler, would they? It seems I don't like think I mean, eat. my dog would literally eat anything. It's just the gummy consistency is probably not a dog's fave. Um, but regardless, that's uh, how can we know for sure? I don't want to do an Ian Malcolm Dookie analysis. Actually, he wasn't into it, was he? He yeah. hated that they were putting their hands inside the Dino Dookie. So I did a quick. A search of Animal Hub, where I get all my facts and figures, and the answer to this question that was posed by Seth, can dogs eat Twizzlers? Okay. And here's the answer for y'all. To specifically answer the question, can dogs eat Twizzlers? Strictly, the answer is yes. Okay. All There's right. no harm done for the dogs to ingest them. Uh, okay. Besides, they are known to be safe for consumption, as even kids love to eat them. So... Wait, here's what it says here. Too much is bad. Twizzlers may be safe for dogs. However, they should not be recommended to be given to your dogs in large quantity. No <laughs> fucking, fucking shit. shit. Yeah, oh, how for many sure. Really eat? Okay, but also you can't say like kids like to eat them so it's safe because my kid likes grapes. And if I give my dog a grape, I believe she'll explode. So like, that's not a good metric for that. My kid also loves chocolate. Like, yeah. that's not a good metric. And Are dogs yeah. not supposed to do grapes? No. Oh, shit. I gotta go. <laughs> Mr. Barkley? <laughs> Mr. Barkley? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, I guess I should ask. Does anybody know how to make a dog poop now? <laughs> um, To get it out. Okay. Twizzlers will give them diarrhea. Hi, brothers. I work at a grocery store deli in a rural area, and a few days ago, someone came to the counter who I am 95% sure is a moderately famous Hollywood actor. The actor stop, not stop, stop. Let's just scroll through the question and see if they say who the actor is, because it's not. I don't think it is. And if this is the case, like, how can we how can we d approach this one in good faith? On fam? what plan? Yeah, how? I we can't. You have to tell us who it is. You have to email us. Email is. us next week. Try it again. Email us again next week and let us know who it is because we can't. That's true is... because like there are there are Hollywood celebs that if you said they got away to a rural area, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, this is the first time we've ever sent something back for a second draft. Send it in. Say who it is. We'll do this one again. But this we can't not not know. Yes, and please include the original text of your question. We have to know who the person is. It means everything. And use the same sign off. We won't say it here, but that way I can. Yes, and actually to reply to your first email that you sent to keep them yes, like yes, threaded. Yes. And send okay. us a Bitcoin for a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I work in an office. Is that how it works? That I want a I want a three hundred dollars of Bitcoin. I work in an office building that has a kitchen, and we've discovered that many of our spoons are going missing at an alarming rate. My boss has personally bought new spoons to replace the missing ones on enough occasions that she dressed up as a spoon for Halloween. To remind people of the issue. Sounds like a fun person. She won the costume competition, in case you're wondering. I was. was. I was. Where are our spoons going? And how can I stop this from happening? That's from Burglarized in Baltimore. Oh, now, I got it. I know. What is it? Up your butt and around the corner. Next question. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. A little intense. Um, I wish this would happen to me because I have a sad story for y'all. I, uh, a few years ago was in need of spoons. Uh-huh. Because we were out and we went through them a lot. I was in need of spoons. And I got a container of spoons 
and it was like an eight pack, right? So like eight spoons, eight forks, eight knives. Get home, put them into the silverware drawer, and Fuck you'll, yeah. never, you'll never believe this. Okay. What? I hate these spoons. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I hate these spoons. What's they wrong? Feel, they feel, okay, one, they have no heft. They feel like they're made of plastic. Uh, Two, the the top is shaped like baby spoons. I can't get four crunches of Captain Crunch in here. I can't get, I can't get oh, four biscuits. Oh, it's a shallow, shallow, it's not it's a, a deep. Shallow it's bowl. like a shallow, narrow, tiny spoon that is weak. Mm. And uh, is is there? There is nothing powerful about this spoon. It is a weak spoon <laughs> that I hate, and I have eight of them now. And I would do anything if someone could give me an excuse to replace these spoons. Please, spoon thief, if you're hearing this, come steal my spoons. Yeah, these miserable spoons. Can Free we all me. agree? I have not reached into the silver drawer when I needed a friendly spoon to help me eat my cereal soups or whatever, whatever, what have you. I have not reached into that drawer and mindfully chosen a small spoon, a little spoon, a, I guess a teaspoon over a big boy spoon since I was an eight years old. That's yes. a, that's a wild choice to make. Why would I, do you want to work twice as hard for the same amount of soup? No, nah, I don't. I want, I want to carry a lot of soup up to my mouth with each go. And I don't know why the, the littler spoons even exist. I want, I want the spoon to endanger the corners of my mouth. I will say that with big fork versus tiny fork, tiny fork, sometimes I look and I'm like, yeah, this is a thin food. I don't need that big fork. This is a conservationist. I'm going to save my energy. I don't need to lift the extra weight of the big fork. But with the spoon, I agree with you, Griffin. Those little spoons, that's for my baby now. My How baby cool can have those spoons. How cool would this movie be if I was having uh, dinner with the queen and I showed up on my uh, scooter I rented from the street and I rode into Buckingham and rolled up to the table, and then they were like, you're late, and I was like, fuck off, and sat down, and I threw my backpack uh, under the table. And then they started, and they served up a, a soup, and I took like four of the seven sort of implements that were uh, lining my plate, and I just threw them to the ground. And they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, gang, you only need the big spoon, and you need the big fork, and maybe a knife for hard meat. And that's it. And then they all were like, oh, shit, you're right. And then uh, I pulled out my boom box and we had a party. And that's the end of the movie. And so this one's called uh, Manners Schmanners. And Travis, I am going to. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, I'm going to need to borrow it. Um, but this is it's, it's what I believe in really strong. And um, I think Mike Myers is going to play every role but me. Okay. Um, and to solve your problem, uh, burglarized in Baltimore, what you're going to want to do is much like coffee shops do. You want to get a bigger spoon, mm. chain that to the regular spoons. And so that way people are less likely to steal it because it has like a big dangly, I don't know, a spatula or a spoon, maybe just a big piece of wood on there. Something so they have to return the spoon back to you. <sighs> Would it be helpful if this is a, this is a thought. What if... What's the what you see a big stack of spoons, huge uh -huh. stack of spoons, big sexy spoons really? with the curve just the way you like. What's mm -hmm. the first thing you want to do? Put stuff them right in my butt. Yeah, put it around right the corner in your pocket. Exactly, stuff around oh. your pocket. What if there's just one spoon for the whole office, mm. and it's like it's a member of the family. If somebody yeah. steals this motherfucker, it's on. Like, and you know it because you are waiting on it. You were waiting on the spoon. You cannot get that spoon out of the break room. No way. Someone else is, needs to stir their cremora into their uh, their decaf. They need yeah. a spoon. I'm just going over your yearly review here. Your numbers have been good. Uh, your customer service reviews are way up. Now, I do see here that you hog the spoon. Did you hog so, the spoon? You're a little bit of a spoon hog, Victoria. You're fired. <laughs> spoon hog! <laughs> My favorite James Bond villain. It's a good one. So what if we have everybody they in the office- say there's enough spoons for you. <laughs> Never enough spoons for you, spoon hog. <laughs> Never a fork will do. Why not a spoon or two thousand? What a la la. Spoon hog. What if everybody was, has their own spoon? Like, <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta point out. 
uh-huh. was doing I was doing kind of a parody cover of Soundgarden Spoon Man, but Justin took it and ran with it in such a I different made direction. A parody cover of Chris Cornell's theme from uh, <laughs> Casino Royale. Yeah, but I mean, Skyfall would have matched sort of the the rhythm. Skyfall or like Spoon Goldfinger. Hall. You could have done like Spoon was a, Finger. Mine, mine was yeah. not a parody; it was a pastiche. I was cap. Oh, I was an homage. This- it was an homage. I was capturing. It's like a. It's like how um, you know uh that weird Al song. Everything you know is wrong. It's sort of like a tone parody or a pastiche of the Marble Giants. That's kind of what I was going for. A sound like a tone a a tone parody. A pastiche. Mm. Yeah, maybe can if we, we say pastiche eighty more times. Can we just go to the money zone? We've never done this before, but we're just going to go back and forth on this one. Just Amp two. versus Amp. Yeah, Amp. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, folks, hiring is challenging. Right, Griffin? Yeah, I hate doing it, but it, there are lots of... Uh, well, there's not. There's really just the one way to make things easier, huh, Juice? Yeah, that place is ZipRecruiter, isn't it, Griffin? Yeah, they make hiring simple, fast, and smart. Isn't that right, Travis? No. Yeah. Uh, z- yes. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over how many, Griffin? 100. Travis? Whoa. Of the webs, Justin? <laughs> Leading job boards, but it's it's true. They don't stop there with their powerful matching technology. ZipRecruiter will scan your DNA and your nope. blood. No. <laughs> and they'll steal your DNA and your blood. Yep. And they'll f- legally force you to take whatever job they say no. is the right fit for this your isn't genetic true. makeup. Anyway, it's they like take... the giver. It's kind of like the giver. Like basically, the giver. <laughs> when no. you're boring, Zip Recruiter assigns you a job. <laughs> and that's not. Do you feel a chip in the back of your neck? That's Can't. Zip Recruiter. You Couldn't already have that. it. That's Zip Recruiter there. It? Now, can you see colors? Do you feel emotions? Good no. news. Zip Recruiter has designated you as a giver. Okay, I have to tell you legally what the gene splicers at ZipRecruiter actually do is they scan thousands of resumes using their latent psychic gene powers to find people (laughs) with the right experience and invite them to apply to your job. That's what they actually do. All right, now we can go back to uh, goof goof arounds. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address. Folks, that's underlined and bold and italicized. So ZipRecruiter really wanted me to say out loud, Exclusive web address, ziprecruiter.com slash my brother. That's ziprecruiter.com slash M Y B R O T H E R. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Advertisers don't keep advertising with you if, if it's a direct response like this, right? The way this game works is advertisers take out an ad and they have something like that, 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 that link that you're supposed to use to try ZipRecruiter for free. And if enough people use that, that's called direct response. They know that people are using that thing. They heard it on our show and we did a good ad. And so people are using it. ZipRecruiter has been advertising with us for years. So shockingly, at some point, apparently at many points, our listeners of my brother, my brother and me have been listening to the three of us chuckle fucks and thought, ah, these are the guys I should turn to for hiring advice. I'm going to do what they told me to do. Like a lot of you do it. And thank you yeah. so much. But it's very shocking to me. This is how undeniable the Zip Recruiter service is. Is It sounds so strong and powerful that even th- three dum-dums cannot fuck it up. It's so good. It's Zip Recruiter. You got to. Can I tell you about Squarespace? Please Yeah, do. okay. Okay, but in doing this, I'm actually going to promote my own project that I use Squarespace to correct. You can go to buttercupisaverygoodgirl.com to find a website I made on Squarespace in about five minutes that is just a slideshow of nice pictures of my dog, Buttercup, who is very cute. Um, it's I think it's a very good website. And like I said, it was really like uh, maybe five minutes. And that's what Squarespace does, because you can, let's see, let me run through what I did here. Create a beautiful website too. turn your cool idea into a new website, check. Showcase your work, I took these pictures of Buttercup, check. Announce an upcoming event or special project, this is a special project, check. And more, check. Trav. What? This website sucks. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> Buttercup is a very nah, good but girl. But I'm com. looking at it now, man. There's no fucking games. There's no like flash animations. There's <laughs> there's like, a slideshow of good dog pictures. Bubba, I do have Bubba, a question. Bubba, there's though. like six pics, but no games. <laughs> well, there's a. I have a frequently asked question section. I've got about Buttercup section. Why exactly you, did you put your credit card in so many of these pictures? You could yeah. make it out in oh, literally that weird? every other one. <laughs> Can you fucking update the homepage at least to have it say like games are coming? <laughs> yeah, That's I will add it. games on the way under construction. I haven't finished the website yet, but please come back to it. I'm sorry there's no games yet. I'll uh, add some I'll add some flash dating games where you can date Buttercup. Is that weird? <laughs> no, I just want one where she's running around grabbing bones and her barks turn into fireballs or something, but like just okay. think about it, bud. That'll come in Buttercup is a very good girl dot com two point oh. Okay. That um but if you wanna address. make if you wanna make a website dedicated to your pet, you can do so. And uh, you you can do it very easily because Squarespace has beautiful templates created by world class designers and powerful e commerce functionality. So if I want to start selling Buttercup merch through my website, I can. Uh, free and secure hosting, so I'm not worried about people like, you know, hacking Buttercup is a very good girl. Oh god, now I'm worried about it. And there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. So head to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code my brother, all one word, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash my brother. And then enter the code my brother, all one word. Uh, this message is for Vriska and it's from the Dirk John Hive Mine. And they requested uh, this message and it's their money. So whatever. Vriska did nothing wrong. So there is the message that you paid money for. Maybe it's your ringtone out. Maybe it's your text message alert. I don't know. But there's Taco saying the thing that you said you wanted him to say. Maybe it's going to be in court evidence. And they'll Maybe play that in court. And they'll be like, ah, evidence. shoot. Uh, I'm going to do another one. Okay. I, that one was short. This is for Daniel. And it's from future Daniel. It says, hey, Daniel, why did you spend $100 to have the McElroys read this message, you dingus? Stop being fiscally irresponsible just because you're feeling sad at the moment. Oh, oh, well, I suppose it didn't hurt. Things are looking better over here in 2018, but we can't keep doing this. And that's for Daniel, and it's from future Daniel. And that's very there's, meta. But I It's very that, meta. I also don't that's think not there's... how that works. Yeah, I don't think that there's any way that things are looking better over here in 2018 is true. But keep, you never know keep, for Daniel and Daniel's world. Alexa. What did Alexa do? She was telling me about the Encyclopedia Britannica for some reason. Oh, now my Alexa's gone. Ah, oh, fuck. I wish Alexa would cuss. Uh, here's a Jumbotron for Brian, and it's from Michael, who says, Congratulations to my chemical engineerist brother on your impending bundle of joy. Hopefully by the time you re hear this, I'll have convinced Allie to let our dad be called peepums, but I'm not sure that'll work. Hearing this in the resonant tones of the brothers will take the sting out of the disappointment from your band directorist brother. Uh, and this was for May, so almost certainly the baby is is here. I uh, hope everything's going well. And it's kind of fucked up how grandpas and grandmas get to pick their name, right? They get to pick their, their chosen sort mm -hmm. of nickname. Like, dad is like, I'm Peepums now. And it's like, I feel like I should get a choice in the matter. Because that's a, that's a word that is uncomfortable for me to call you my real father. Yeah, but you're stuck with it. Welcome. Thank you. No problem. Thank These you. are real podcast listeners, not actors. What do you look for in a podcast? Reliability is big for me. Power. I'd say comfort. What do you think of this? Oh. That's Jordan Jesse Go. Jordan Jesse Go? They came out of the floor? And down from the ceiling? That can't be safe. I'm upset. Can we go now? Soon. Jordan Jesse Go, a real podcast. Riddle me piss. No, boy. I was no. About, no, Travis, please don't. Please. What were you gonna do? No, I was gonna do something. What were we you going to do? Do we have too many segments now? No, we have just enough segments. And I'm going to do my segment instead of Travis's. Okay. So well, can we do both of them? I don't know if we'll have time to do both of them. All right. Can I, can I please start? Time vote. Just, I think I should be a tiebreaker. Okay. What do you think, Griffin? I, I don't know what your segment's going to be. Well, just let me do my segment. Can I just please do my segment that I, I've been preparing it for like half the episode? Please. I have two. I, I, I know some questions. Guys, please. 
please, please, just let me do my segment. Riddle me piss. Ah, <laughs> damn it. A new riddle for you. Mm. <laughs> Very good <laughs> riddle. <laughs> Wait, where did he go? <laughs> who? Who? <laughs> you riddle me, riddle me, piss the, the like sort of the fun gr- and sort of Renaissance the uh, dancing boy riddle. turned into yeah, Yoda? went to Dagobah it's a little me. bit. Here is yeah. my riddle I have for you. In which month does money grow on trees? <gasps> In which month does money grow on tree? I don't know. Well, it's a riddle. Mm. Uh, what? Mm. Um, it's a riddle. Yeah, sure. In which month uh, yeah. does money grow on trees? Yeah, a March. Never remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, riddles.com, you're off the fucking chain. And it's actually N E V E R hyphen. M B E R. So it's not even member. It's just an unpronounceable never member. Oh, okay. November. November. That one made me, uh, dude, that one made me really sleepy. That's weird. <laughs> riddles never hit me before and then, like, made me re- like want to just go straight to bed. I have a riddle for you. All right. A boy was born in 1955. <gasps> he just had his 18th birthday today. How did that happen? Because of the leap year? Was it a leap year situation? No, dumbo. Well, then there's literally no other. <gasps> 1955 was not the year he was born. It was the hospital room he was born in. Fucking holy shit. Oh, did you not like that one? Okay, let me No, try it's this just one. like any clues would have been good, riddles.com. This has to be fucking fair. <laughs> let me try this one then, Griffin, because it was a completely separate riddle on a completely different page of riddles.com. A man was born in 1898. He is still alive now at the age of 33. How is this possible? Leap year? <laughs> no, he was born in room 1898 in the hospital. I have one for you. Okay. I have four wings, but I am not a windmill. I have clawed feet, but I am not a bear. I have scales, but I am not a reptile. Who am I? Who am uh, I? <laughs> Justin, who am what? I? So, what am I? Maybe makes more sense. I have four wings, but I'm not a windmill. <laughs> no fucking okay. shit. There's no way. Are those called wings on a windmill? Are those called wings? I have four wings, but I'm not a windmill. I have clawed feet, but I'm not a bear. I have scales, but I'm not a reptile. Who am I? <laughs> I don't know. Um, A house. <laughs> no. A tub. No. It's whatever you think. It's ours. Is it a dragon? A butterfly or a dragonfly. <laughs> <laughs> what? You Butterflies can't... don't have fucking clawed feet. You can't do it like that, riddles.com. <laughs> <laughs> but also, no one's ever been like, be careful, that butterfly will claw you. It doesn't work that way. You know, can't, you Travis, shit. you're missing the point. You can't have a riddle where it's like, it could be a couple different things. <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> yeah, the knife the knife was made out of ice or the chandelier fell on him. It's, it's one, one of, of the those. two. Uh okay. Is that all have we gotten that out of our system? I feel like with this, this segment can never last longer than like four minutes. I feel like this is a we get in, we do a riddle, we get out. Okay. Because it's, it, 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 it's I just feel like if I hear too many of these riddles, i I I You'll die. I, something's gonna. Br- I might literally die. I think that when I that one riddle made me sleepy. That was my body saying, "Okay, a few more of these, and we're dead." Um, how about a Yahoo instead? These always wake me up and make me feel amazing. Yes. Here's one that was sent in by Nick Waterstrat. Thanks, Nick. It's Yahoo Answers user Jaden. Jaden asks, "I'm 13 and have 82 dollars." What should I spend it on? Don't say to just save it. Mm. 
Huh. Hmm. So $82. Yep. The only restriction Jaden has provided is that this money must be spent. Uh, well, I mean, there's lots of restrictions. He cannot buy uh, anything a, cool, a cigar or a uh, or a porn, and he can't buy. He can't vote. But that's not a money thing, is it? Huh? Can't buy a car, I guess, with eighty two dollars. Um, I feel like this is why, for me personally speaking. Uh, trading card games were invented so that this question would always be answered for me from ages like 10 to 17 Mm -hmm. is that I would always know where $82 should be spent. And it was magic or Pokemon or hero clicks. And then I was, I did it and I didn't have to stress out about my, my earnings. I just knew where it was going to go. Candy. You could buy $82 worth of candy. They're fucking 13 years old. Come on. What do they need with candy? They're basically adults. I don't know, pocket knives? Is that, can you buy that at 13? Pocket knives? Travis Patrick. I'm trying to think about what I would have bought at 13. Oh, okay, that is fair. Yeah, that's legit. I would have bought candy or pocket knives. Didn't you buy a nice steamer trunk for our bedroom? I did have one of those, yes, but uh, I believe I got that for Christmas. That is a cool gift. I wanted a place to keep my secrets. Uh, Yeah, not a very hidden trove there, Captain Jack. Not a very, um, not a very, not. But you didn't really bury that one. It was kind of a big steamer trunk in the middle of the room, wasn't it? There, Captain Barbarossa, with your buried secrets. Now, maybe with eighty-two dollars at thirteen, invest in some real estate. You're not going to be able to get much. That's the same as saving it. No, no, no. You buy the, because here's the thing, Griffin. You buy eighty-two dollars worth of real estate by the time you're twenty-one. That's like $82,000 worth of real estate in this economy. In this economy, yeah, which is either good or really bad, but. It's one of those. Justin, what if you're gonna, what if you, if I only had $83 in my pocket, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's 82, so like, that may I found another ruin dollar. your idea. If oh, I only good. Had $82 oh, you mugged someone? Um, if I only had $82 in my pocket, you know where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be looking for a come up. I'm going to pop oh. some tags. Oh, good. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm going to the thrift shop. Burr, 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 burr. I'm going to go in there. I got $82 in my pocket. I'm yeah. going to buy some leopard mink and, cool. uh, uh-huh. that I should have washed. And all um, right. I would just go to the thrift shop with my $82, pop some tags, look for come up. Okay. Uh, Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Velour jumpsuit, maybe. Some yeah. house slippers. Mm. A dookie brown leather jacket that I found uh, digging. Mm. I think I would get point zero 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 one bitcoins. Oh, that'd be good. KB, KB toys still around? Oh, they don't sell toys anymore. Nobody sells toys anymore. Mm. Did you guys go to? Just... Did you guys go to a, a any Toys R Us before they closed? Yeah, I did. Sad, yeah. Yeah, this isn't funny. No, it just bummed me out. I just I used to work there. Eighty two dollars. I never had eighty two dollars when I was thirteen. The first time I had eighty two dollars is after I had my first job at the country's best yogurt when I was eighteen <laughs> years old. And then and, and even then I was making, you know, two dollars and fifty cents an hour or whatever the fuck minimum wage was back in two thousand and five in in Huntington, West Virginia. Eighty two dollars is a a princely sum. Are you kidding me? I would have I would have gotten my own apartment when I was thirteen with eighty two fucking dollars. <laughs> Here's what I do if I was thirteen and eighty two dollars. I would buy a clear bag and as many full size candy bars as I could afford. Put them mm. all in there. Then at Halloween I would roll around with this bag and then direct people who asked me about my haul to different addresses in my neighborhood. And it would mm. create a lot of confusion and a Ooh, lot of chaos yeah. about where the cool houses were. And then I could just kind of like do my thing. And I would be yeah. going out there because they'd be looking for these fake houses that I created with my fake uh, hall. And yeah. just, to, just to finalize all the deets of the plan here, Justin, what <laughs> would your thing be? <laughs> what do you mean, what would my thing be? Well, you're like, you would do your thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> I would. Okay, so I pick 
I would make up a bunch of addresses. And so people would be uh-huh. like, where are they doing full size? And no, 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 no. I get that. I get that. You got to get then you said, sick of war. Angel Lane. And then they Right. That's their <laughs> thing. As you have established, she would send them off to do their thing. Yeah. yeah. And then you would just be out there doing your thing. Yeah. Which so is in what? this circumstance, my what is thing your would thing? be I roll up at each house at about mm-hmm. 825. Uh-huh. And I'm like, listen, everybody's off looking for the good houses. You've got five minutes left. You don't want to leave that candy bowl lying around your house. You're just going to scarf it this week. Hit me up, and you'll be okay. the only game in town so you can get all the candy. That's good. Okay. That's good. And now- then you light the black candle, and you reawaken the Sanderson <laughs> sisters. Yeah, that would be my thing. They yeah. We're establishing what our things would be. That would be yeah. my thing. I mean, that's fucked up, because they killed a lot of people, Travi. Listen, I don't want to do it. No, no, but I'm you, trying you to you impress that to cool new girl. No, that would just be my thing. Okay. You know, because well, like I try to scare my little sister. Sure. And I'm trying to impress that girl that I just met because I moved no, into there's, town. There, I'm not saying there's reasons to not to do it. I'm just saying they killed a lot of people, Trav. Yeah, but then I would also stop them, Griffin. You know what That's I do with a- $82 at 13? I would buy a bunch of marbles and a big coat. And I would fill the coat with the marbles and I would go to the principal's house and get inside of it somehow. Um, and then I would open up the coat and let all the marbles fall out. Nice. Yeah. And then I'd tell him to, you know, you know, huff my nuts or something like that. And then I'd get out of there. Because <laughs> then the marbles are their problem. I think I'd just go to Cracker Barrel mm. and oh. just buy a bunch of those talking parrots. That's fun. And then you set them up at your principal's house and you'd be like, huff my nuts. And then would be like, huff my nuts. And then I'd be like, huff my nuts. I didn't keep going forever and ever. I love that shit, dude. Yeah, you ever seen a viral video that. like that? <laughs> I'd probably do that. Yeah. Or I'd buy like a bunch of harmonicas just because. Put them in my steamer trunk. I'd do jawbreakers at Cracker Barrel and I would put those in my coat and empty them out of my principal's house because I really want them to slip and fall. I hate that fucking guy. This has been our podcast, my brother. Where does my he fucking get off? You know, same mean of detention. We hope you've enjoyed it. Unless you're Principal Daniels, in which case you could huff Griffin's nuts, apparently. I would spend $82 to get Principal Daniels a tattoo that says huff my nuts <laughs> against his will. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed yourself. Thank you for indulging us with another hour of your precious life. Uh, we sure have had fun uh, hanging out with you, our beloved, beloved uh, listener. Um, we are part of the Maximum Fun Network. There's a lot of great podcasts on there, and uh, you certainly should go and enjoy us. Uh, I, let me recommend Bubble. If it's a limited run sci-fi series, kind of like a Buffy with a hipster slant, and we were on one episode as like craft beer fans, it was very good. So go listen to Bubble, and I think you'll very much love it. Um, I'm going to run through some quick plugs. We're recording this before we go on sale uh, with the tickets, but just in case, uh, we do have shows coming up at the end of September in Seattle and Portland. Um, You can go to macroshows.com slash tours. Uh, The tickets should be on sale when you hear this, unless something has gone horribly wrong. You can find those ticket links there. Um, Also, I have another Cincinnati Underground Society show coming up September 23rd. The link is also at macroshows.com. I'm going to be at Dragon Con doing some photo ops. Link at macroshows.com. Schmanners is coming to London September 8th. Um, And I'm also doing a Schmanners show at uh, New York Comic Con, October 6th. Links to all of those things are at macroshows.com slash tours. And oh, we have a graphic novel. It's at theadventurezonecomic.com. And thank you all so much for uh, buying that. Those who, who have, helping us get on the New York Times bestseller list. It's very cool. PodCon round two uh, is oh, yeah. coming up in January. The Indiegogo for that is still going. You can go to bit.ly slash podcon 2 to donate there. And it's not just donating. It's also like buying your ticket or getting, mm-hmm. you can do remote viewing. So even if you're not able to make it out to Seattle in January or not remote viewing, excuse me, there's recordings of it that you can hear <laughs> Remote later. viewing is the psychic thing, right? Yeah. Okay. I believe that's uh, the psychic. <laughs> hey, if you want to do that. If you want to astral project in, it's going to be so good. <laughs> but please do pay. If you astral project into the podcon, please, yeah. please kick in a few bucks. Because we'll know. We'll know, uh, obviously. That's bit.ly slash podcon the number two. I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for these four theme songs. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. It's a super good album. John's a super good dude. Uh, he's got a new podcast here on Maximum Fun. It's called Friendly Fire. 
Uh, he does it with uh, Adam and Benjamin from the uh, Greatest Generation and Greatest Discovery, the Star Trek podcast, and it's great. It's like a it's a, like a thoughtful uh, look at old war movies where they uh, they talk about sort of the the history of of cinema about war and sort of geopolitical history and all kinds of stuff. A, a deep dive into those movies. It's called Friendly Fire. It's a super good show, and John's a super good dude. Uh, thank you, John. And do you guys want that final? Hit me. Yes, please. This final Yahoo was sent in by Drew Davenport, level 9000, Yadru Druid. Thank you, Drew. It's Yadru Answers user. Unholy, who asks, does anyone have the problem of croissants tasting like blood? <laughs> <laughs> what? Huh? My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. He's been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Beloved Maximum Fun Star Trek podcast, The Greatest Generation, is going out on tour. We are bringing Greatest Gen Con to a bunch of cities in the U.S. and Canada. It's our big tribute to slash send up of Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And we have a big leg coming up. Yes, we are raising our legs on a number of cities <laughs> in the coming weeks. We're going to Washington, D.C. on August 23rd. The Bell House in Brooklyn, New York on August 24th. Mass Mocha in North Adams, Massachusetts on August 25th. Pittsburgh on the 28th. Boston, Massachusetts at the Wilbur Theater on the 29th. Atlanta, Georgia at the Earl on the 30th. Ferndale, Michigan at the Magic Bag on the 31st. Those are some great big rooms and some great big cities. Ben. And it's a really fun show. It's accessible even if you haven't listened to the podcast yet. We can't wait to see you when we're out on tour. Check greatestgencon.com for dates and ticketing information. And Khan is spelled K H A N because Wrath of Khan. Greatest Gen, K H A N.com. <laughs>